Yeah, I've started the recording. So in uh, in yesterday class, we have discussed about I think uh, where I was. I think uh, we uh, discuss about how you can add, uh, how you can record the stuff, right? Correct? Right, guys? Okay. So uh, let me open my J meter. Let me open my J meter. So. Uh, <laughs> OK, so in the last class, uh, I have told you that how you can record the scenario, whatever the scenario you want to perform, how you can record. OK, so leave that thing uh, right now. OK, leave that thing right now. OK, so let's try to understand uh, one different concept. That is the assertion. Let's try to understand about the assertion. What did you mean by the assertion? OK. Uh, let's suppose we have the test plan inside the test plan we are adding the uh, sampler uh, thread group right and then we are adding the sampler we added the sampler http request and then we have to add the listener listener is for the report right i have added the listener and then uh, again uh, let me add some more listener view result summary and uh, again let me add some more listener uh, like uh, view result table view result table right so let's try to understand what is the assertion here what did you mean by the assertion okay so inside the request let me uh, hello anyways trying to say something okay uh, give me a second, guys. Let me call uh, the person who has not joined last time. So, uh, after this class, we'll meet on next Saturday, Sunday, in the same time, 3 to 5 o'clock next saturday sunday three to five o'clock and one more thing guys every live classes we have the uh, recording session every live class we have the recording session if you miss any of the class you can go and watch the recording session okay so here you can see every live class we have the recording session you can go and uh, watch and one more thing guys uh, please join this uh, uh, WhatsApp group I have created yesterday. Uh, in the meanwhile, you can please join this WhatsApp group so that whenever we have any update regarding the class, right? So we, uh, I will update in this group. Okay. Otherwise, you have to open the Skype and check actually. So if you have any uh, yeah. study, then you can put the question here also. Okay. Yeah, ma'am. Yes, I'm trying to connect with the WhatsApp, but unable to join the group. Mm. There is uh, like something went wrong. OK, I will check. I will check. No, I will check. You can open the link in any of the browser, then you can join the group. Yeah, yes, some I'm uh, trying. So OK, you I think Asis, you were was facing the same issue no? yesterday. Uh, no, I was not facing that. Sir. One person was facing the study issue, same issue. He was not able to uh, attain. Amul, I think uh, he was facing the issue. It's working no problem. So how it get resolved? Yeah, just use any of the browser like Chrome browser and open that link. You can able to join that. Okay, group. just copy the link and um, uh, hit the link in the Chrome browser and then join, right? Ma'am, yes. you can try. Otherwise, I can. I will uh, individually add you. Okay. So uh, sure. okay, let's go further. So uh, let's try to understand uh, in J meter, guys. 
let me clear one thing in jmeter if you don't have the coding knowledge leave it still you can be a very good performance tester because in jmeter only 20% coding we are doing 20% coding okay and remaining all the things are dependence on the component the component same thing if you use the load runner if you use the load runner the same concept is also there in the case of load runner right so everything is the component these all are the component we have to play with that we have to play with that actually this component we have to play with that so uh, there are total 60 component total uh, not more than uh, 60 component but there are um, uh, you know 60 important component which we will use frequently okay so in which we have one component that is assertion here you can see when you right click on the thread group on the thread group click on add and here you will get the option the assertion and here you will get the different assertion you can see it here response assertion json assertion size assertion xpath compare duration html so there are multiple assertion in which few of them are only important not all okay which are frequently we are using in the real time okay so what is the use of assertion basically why we are using the assertion okay what happened when you are uh, running the things right uh, you want to validate something you want to verify something right like uh, the status code is 200 or not like uh, uh, you want to verify any text right so in that case you can verify that text right the assertion means to verify actual and the expected result this assertion is not only in the jmeter it is in also we are writing in the postman in the api testing also we are writing in the restful api in the restful testing in the soap ui right so assertion means to verify the actual and the expected okay so first what i can do i will create one request i will create one request uh, that uh, uh, let me create one rest request the rest api request okay uh let me take the rest api request we have the dummy uh, rest api request so we can take it so uh, i will take it and pass it here pass it here and uh, copy the http model and pass it here the protocol okay so your and the resource you have to pass it here in the path section right and copy here and pass it here clear you have mapped the thing right now what this vertically is doing this will get the data get the users data okay get the users data let me save the file name mm, save save uh, give me a second let me create one folder and inside that folder i want to save uh let me create one folder home create folder and give the folder name as a uh, okay i can create this file okay the file get created dot gmx file right so uh, uh you uh, have because uh, Amolia, I have just one doubt like, so you are just uh, copying that URL, uh, can you just go to the JMeter? Okay. So you are uh, just splitting that URL like protocol based URL and then uh, as like resource. So uh, it's uh, it's always mandatory like we need to uh, put that uh, protocol under that protocol. On. But in case yes, of exactly. server name or IP, yeah. But in case of server name or uh, server name or IP, we can uh, directly put that base URL along with that uh, resource name. So is it mandatory to split the URL like uh, separately like base URL and resource like? Um, yeah, it's vanity. Let's do that. Uh, what happened? So if I am passing this thing, let's try to execute like that. Okay. 
So if you go to the uh, run and you can see it get passed, right? You are able to get the data and this is your uh, uh, URL, right? In the request okay. section, you can see. And let me merge it uh, like that. Correct? And yeah. let's see what happened. Okay. Now you will get that. You will get them. You can do it. Right. But generally, generally, uh, this is not the ideal way. Why? I will explain you that thing. Okay. Why? I will explain you. Okay. So always try to specify the resource inside the path and the base URL here inside the server name. Okay. So when you executed this call, you can see the test case get passed, right? And here you can see uh, 200. 200, you can see it here. And the, in the response, you can see the multiple uh, data here also, right? So you are doing the performance testing. So you don't have to worry that data is correct or wrong. You don't have to worry because you are not the functional guy. Agree? Yes. You are responsible to do the performance testing. You don't have to worry that data is correctly uh, display or wrongly display. You don't have to worry. This is not your concern actually. If data will come uh, wrong, right? That will not come to you actually. That will go to the who the guys who has tested the functionality. Here, your duty is you have to do the functional test. Sorry, you have to do the performance testing, right? So, but uh, I don't want to set the validation. I don't want to set the validation because you are not doing the functional testing. But you have to in uh, add, you know, uh, you have to make sure that uh, if uh, other things are coming, like apart from the 200, then uh, assertion will get failed. Like uh, if you are not getting success code, apart from the success code, you are getting some other value, then please fail the test case. Please fail the test case, right? So what I can do, right click on that request, right click, and here you have, you will get option assertion. Assertion, okay? And here you can select response assertion response assertion okay and here you will get the page of response assertion here you can see if you want to verify the text response anything you want to verify uh, from this response any value you want to verify just paste that value here select this radio button and paste that value inside here mm, here right Let's suppose in the response, you want to verify, uh, you want to verify this name, okay? This particular name is displayed or not, okay? So pass it here, okay? Mm, contain, okay? Contain, because I don't want to actual um, uh, contain, right? And then, run this particular request. You can see it get passed. Right? Similarly, if you pass something like uh, uh, like that, okay? And let me execute again. You can see it get failed. Why? Because the assertion which you have added where you are verifying the test, that not, not get match with the response. In the response, this particular text is not exist. Right? But we are not using this assertion. Generally, what we are using, we are verifying the response code because we are not doing the functionality testing here. Right? So we are only, I had the assertion for uh, response code. The response code select the response code and add so it get added and write and when you again run you can see your test case get passed and you can see the response code is 200 so that means if anything comes apart from the 200 
your test case will get failed. Your let's suppose I'm writing my expectation is here. You are writing the expectation what you want. What you want actually. Here you are writing your expectation. OK, let's suppose I am expecting as per the requirement as per the requirement. I'm expecting 201. Let's suppose because it is to get call. You will not never get 201. OK, let's suppose. OK, when I execute this thing, you can see it here. It is still executing actually. It, this one is the previous one. You can see it get failed. Because your uh, so guys tell me this thing. Can I say this is your expect is expectation and the response which you are getting by the server that is the actual. Can I say? This is the actual and the things which you are passing here. This is as expected. Can I say? Right. Yes, right. So you can see I have added one assertion and it get failed. OK, so uh, uh, when we design the stuff, when we create the scenario at that time, I will add the component right now. Only understand the component actually what the component works actually. OK, so uh, you have added the 200 assertion. OK. Now and when you go and check, there are some other assertion which is very, very important is the duration assertion which we are using miserably. OK, the duration assertion. Let's suppose your client is asking to you. Your client is asking to you that, uh, you know, uh, uh, this particular request will take not greater than 10 seconds. This particular request will not take greater than 10 seconds. If it is taking greater than 10 seconds, then fail the test case. Then fail that particular test case. You want to fail that particular test case if it is taking more than 10 seconds. OK, Be then what you have to use in that case, you can use the uh, go here and you can use duration assertion and you can pass the value it's it is in the millisecond right and when you convert millisecond into second can let's suppose the client expecting uh, uh client expectation is uh not any request will take more than 10 seconds if it is taking below 10 seconds, then it's fine. If it is taking more than 10 seconds, then you have to report which request is taking, uh, you know, more than 10 seconds, which particular request get failed if it is taking more than 10 seconds. OK, so here uh, let me convert 10 seconds. Yeah, if I put 10,000 here, then that means it is 10 seconds, right? So if I execute this particular request, you can see it here that get pass. And when you see it here, what is the response time? 340 millisecond. The what is the uh, uh, load time? The 340 millisecond. If you go to the summary report, you can see it here. Uh, OK, there is not here. Minimum throughput. OK, I think we have to add one other uh, listener that is uh, summary aggregate report. Uh, let me again execute. Uh, OK, here also not summary throughput uh, here also not. Uh, OK, here also not. I think which one I think it's table. Uh, let me add one more listener view result table and let me execute. Yeah, you can see it here uh, in the table. Start time, response time, sample time, 304 second. That means the response time when I call this particular request, it connected with the server 
and uh, start the processing and get the response so the the response time is 304 millisecond right and here you have passed 10000 millisecond means obviously it will pass right agree agree guys yeah agree with us okay so uh, give me a second let me call again last time call the person i don't want to miss yeah anything. because just we have uh, uh, comparing like uh, this request is uh, responding within these seconds that's it no yeah that is comparing with the response time yeah exactly okay our expectation is 10000 millisecond and but, the, it is, but it is responding uh, less than 10 to 10000 seconds so it is the test case is pass yeah that's why that this 10000 means if you pass any value here that means it's taking equal to or less than 10000 okay okay if it is uh, uh, greater than 10000 Uh, it will show like indicate uh, with a red color like it that yeah, case exactly, is passed exactly exactly yeah, can you Let's can you show the, what yeah. we can do uh, uh, if i put less than here uh, 304 let's suppose if i put here 300 okay millisecond right yeah to fail the test case right yeah right? exactly and then we can run this thing you can see it here it get failed and when you see duration assertion get failed you can see it here i have added two assertion here yeah the first duration one is the yeah. response in the response i am verifying the status code but it get pass right duration yeah. assertion get failed you can see in the duration here you will see the uh, message mm, it took 680 millisecond and your expectation is 300 Okay, okay. Actually, because when we observe here, uh, first uh, thing also it is indicating like uh, red color, like it is pass or fail. Where? Yeah, here first thing. Yeah, we have added two assertions, uh, response assertion yeah. as well as any of the fail, the main will get fail. Okay, okay. So, so only for fails, uh, assertion we will be getting. Uh, that means that will be allocated the uh, this way result for fail. Come again, come again, sir. The voice is very slow. i'm saying like only for failed assertion uh, that will be highlighted in uh, red exactly that uh, only the failed one we will say uh, we'll see here right uh, here you can see if i increase the time here 10000 uh, if i increase the time here you can see it's showing not showing any the past one right so it only show the only failed one okay now it's taking the uh, the response time is 324 here if you go here 324 uh, one thing we can ask do we have any like uh, thing like where we can see like uh, what is the outcome uh, we are getting for that particular assertion if that yeah. is satisfying the here you can see now yeah uh, so is there any listener kind of thing for that listener so this is yeah, the for, listener for the assertion or uh, for the assertion you are asking Yeah, uh, yeah. If you go here, and uh, we have one uh, listen report something. Ta 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 ta. Here, assertion result, right? The assertion result here, right? But rarely we are using. I am even not using that thing. Okay. So here you can go and add uh, the listener uh, assertion listener. Mm, this one. assertion result okay and if you execute you can see it here get user data because it get pass i can't see nothing difference uh, here also you can see it's showing only get user get pass if i fail the things like uh, 200 uh, millisecond if i again re execute then you can see the same thing which i can get it here got, right got, got okay the failed one will uh, you know display here so this yeah, as sorry for interrupting sir me yes sir tell me yeah actually it is this is a single user we are uh, uh, keeping a performance testing if it, if it is a multiple users uh, how we can get to know that this we have to check it like manually or like any tool like it will pick only the failed scenarios like mm mm-hmm. 
so uh, what happens sir uh, if i add a multiple one let's yeah, suppose... multiple users if the if uh, <coughs> only two users response time is greater than expected result mm -hmm. i didn't get you what you are trying to say sir come again yeah yeah we are trying to add a multiple users like uh, at least 10 users in the 10 use <coughs> in the 10 users uh, five will be failed so we have to check it like uh, which user is failed we have to check it manually or it will uh, uh, fetch the results uh, failed results itself okay uh, let's see i'm uh, applying the 10 user here okay, okay 10 perfect. user right yeah. and let me put one average time 350 so that some user get passed some user get failed yeah exactly i, I, I think so right and let me execute right you can yeah. see some of the user get pass and some of the user get fail right yeah okay, okay. so okay. if you go to the view result tree you can see which user get pass and which user get fail the first user get pass second user get pass third user get pass from the fourth user it start failing yeah because okay. the sample time is more so you okay. can check like that okay for example if yes uh, the same requirement uh, asked by client like please put a 100 users in on the server so that uh, please get, get me the results like which are failed how we can uh, report to client like uh, <coughs> these are the failed users and these are the past users like uh, uh, how we can uh, say that the, uh, from these user it is failed like that okay so um, give me a second so you want here generally this type of stuff they will not ask you then really they will ask you the what is the error percentage okay, right okay. what okay. is the percentage of the error it is 70 percent or 30 percentage you know they let's suppose the 10 user we have mm. vikas rahul mayan priya nitish priyanka right so okay. they is they will ask you that uh, which person get failed vikas get failed or mayan get failed they don't uh, take the data like that they, they will ask okay, you okay. one question that how much after, yeah. after which user start failing they will okay. start the question like that yeah uh, because, after uh, which user the you you know the test case is start failing you can see the report and here you can see after the uh, third user yeah perfect because thank you yeah i have cleared cleared out clear. okay if they will not ask you which user get pass or fail this is the you know the that question they will not ask you either okay. they will ask you after which user your response is start failing okay yeah. and what is the percentage of that like that they will ask you the question yeah perfect so thank just you. one thing uh, here we are doing uh, non-functional testing so we will uh, like mainly focus on non functional things like right with us yeah but if you want to do that really if you are doing the functional if you are doing the non functional testing that is performance testing then you have to only focus on the non functional stuff right so if you are thinking that uh, you want to add uh, verify the other things also then you can also verify other property but that is you are wasting your time actually if you want to verify the things to validate the property then you can you have the uh, such type of functionality here if you go here and you have uh, one assertion uh, json assertion using the json assertion you can verify okay let's suppose uh, okay let me i will come to that point also uh, okay let first let me delete so duration assertion is clear right now because yes, yeah, uh, yeah. one fair yeah, example yeah. of duration assertion if you could give uh, this time thing i have not understood well yeah i have um, this is the fail example of the uh, the response assertion you want and duration assertion duration assertion give, yes yeah so the time which you mention here whatever the time you will put it here let's suppose your client is asking to you that uh, please uh, each request you know the maximum time of the response time of each request is uh, let's suppose 10 seconds so uh, 
uh, guys, tell me one thing. When you are doing the manual testing, let's suppose you are testing the Flipkart or any of the application, banking application, any of the project you are testing, right? Uh, let me take the make my trip, right? And you are testing the make my trip. If I click on the hotel, if I click on the hotel, if it is taking a more time, like, uh, uh, you know, more, more than five seconds, six seconds, 10 seconds, then are you ignoring this thing? Or you are reporting this issue to the developer or discussing with your team? Yeah, in functional, we won't report. But uh, when it comes to performance testing, we have to report it. In functional, we are also reporting. Like if anything, if you click on that, right? If you click on that, like you click on the flight and it's taking more time, like more than 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds it's taking, then it is the bad impact to the user. If functionally, if you are doing the functional testing and you are getting much more response time here, obviously, you in the performance testing, obviously, you, the time will get increased, right? When you apply the load. Yeah, correct? exactly. Exactly. So you have to fix the things before. Correct? Yeah, Agree? correct. Agree. So yeah. Agree. you have to fix the things uh, before. If if the single user hitting the server, I'm the single user, I'm hitting the server, and it's opening more than 20 seconds, more than 30 seconds, if I will not report this issue, and when you do the performance testing, in the performance testing, when the 100 user will apply, then you can imagine what would be the response in that case. It will be very late. Either it will get failed. Correct? So, yes. Uh, you, uh, your response, let's suppose the client is asking that each response should be, uh, you know, less than 10 seconds. So here you are giving the, the boundary here. You are, you know, uh, drawing the boundary line here. If they exceed this boundary line, kick them out, means fail this test case, right? So if that particular test case get failed, that means that particular request is taking more than 10,000 seconds. Clear? Yes. 10,000 yes. milliseconds. 10,000 milliseconds. Yes. Okay. Now, come to the another one, the another uh, response. Uh, res duration size assertion. Generally, we are not using. Size assertion. Size assertion. Okay. Here you will, uh, uh, you can see it here, the size assertion. Generally, I, even I have not used, but uh, uh, let me explain you. Okay. In size assertion, what you are doing, you are getting, uh, uh, you know, uh, something from the server. You can see it here. Right. 3, 2, 1, 4. Right. When you go here in, into the request, here you can see the byte, size in byte, right? So like that, you can put the, uh, you know, the value here, right? If that value exceed that particular value, uh, you know, limit, that means, uh, you, know, you know, fail the test case. So here are different types of the comparison. You can see if you want pass, compare the thing three, two, one, four which uh, you are getting from the server. You want to pass the fixed value like 3214. Okay, let's see what happened. If you are applying the load of uh, not 5, 10 user, 5 user. Okay, and let me execute. You can see it here, it get failed. And you can see, okay, duration get failed every time. Let me check what data I have passed. Okay, let me increase the thing actually. Okay. 10 seconds and let me re-execute. Now you can see everything is get passed. You can see it here, the size in byte is 3214 and which is same. And I have selected this radio button, right? And, and uh, if you are applying the scenario, like uh, you have the size and decided, you know, uh, the size is decided, right? Which you get it from the server, right? Let's suppose it is less than less than 3214. In that case, you have to select this option, this radio button. Save it 
and run it. You can see it get failed. Because it is, you can see it here. Right, because you have selected the option less than this value, but it is equal to this value. Similarly, you are expecting the size in byte, the uh, you know uh, the data which you receive from the server in byte that should be greater than this value. Let's suppose I am putting here, it should be greater than four thousand, right? So you are passing the value here. If it is greater than four thousand, which you receive from the server, then the test case, then this particular assertion will get passed. Okay? So when you go and run, you can see it here. You can see the size assertion. It is greater than, but it is taking three two one four, right? And similarly, uh, let's suppose if I write three thousand, then tell me the test case will pass or fail. So let execute and see all the test case get passed because you are getting three two one four, and. You are here passing the expected as a greater than 3000. Similarly, you can use the other one also. But generally, we are not using this uh, the size assertion. OK, so <laughs> this is one type of assertion. If you want to use in your project, you can implement. But I would recommend I am not used so that you can also not do. generally we are not using guys not using honestly okay then we have one more assertion uh, uh, ta, 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 ta. one more insertion html and xpath okay json assertion okay json assertion we have OK. In JSON assertion, what you are writing here. Uh, I think it's right time to explain you or not because we have to explain the query. Mm. <laughs> OK, no problem. Let me explain. So JSON assertion in JSON assertion, what you are trying to do, you are trying to verify the data. Let me add one more request. Let me duplicate and let me fetch the data based on the ID. Let's suppose ID store. Okay. And let me fetch the data. Why it's get filled? JSON assertion. Okay. Let me delete the JSON assertion from here and uh, let me check the response of that. Get the user data, get the user data by ID. Let me change the name. Let me disable, uh, let me remove all the things from here. Let me use only one assertion and let me remove it and let me check. Okay, get by ID, let me check. Okay, resource is not found here. Okay, uh, let me use the whole data from here. Go to JSON editor online. JSON editor online. This is the JSON editor online tool where you can beautify your code. Paste the code and if you click on tree, it will show you in you know in the JSON proper JSON format. Proper JSON format. Earlier it was in the single line, right? So I have beautified the code here using the JSON editor online. OK, let's suppose I want the ID based on the ID. I want to fetch the data. I pass the ID here one and let me call. Uh, ID yeah, you are able to fetch the data, right? Let me copy this thing and pass it here, right? Right, this is the data, right? Now when you get this data, you want to verify the name of that person. You want to verify the name of the person. So uh, you have to write the JSON path. Here you have to write the JSON path. Here in this field. In this field you have to write the JSON path here. How you can write the JSON path? Here you can see the response is in the form of JSON. 
in the form of json if you go to the view result tree in the form of json before that i want to explain you one very important concept uh, which is belong to the real time okay when you are uh, you know when you join any project when you join any project there are three things there are three things you will get uh, uh, you know uh, in the project the first thing you will get the performance testing of web application do the you know the client will provide you the web application and they will ask you to do the performance testing first thing okay so you will get this type of project in the real time performance testing project okay so you will get the web application project like uh, that like suppose i am giving you uh, the make my tree project flip card or any application i am giving you i will give you the web application project this is one thing okay in some of in some of the project you will not get the the web application project they will not provide you the uh, the web application the graphical user interface okay they will not provide you the graphical user interface okay like uh, the icci bank sbi and whatever the project you are working they will not provide you the web application okay what they will provide you they will provide you the service web service they will directly provide you the web service in the web service in some of the project they will provide you the soap service and in some of the project you will get the rest service okay so uh, we have generally three types of the performance testing project right so let's suppose you work on any organization they are doing the performance testing of the web application right like that you have recorded the in the last class what we have did you have recorded the stuff right scenario and you can do the performance testing right in some of the project you will not get this application they will not provide you the web application what they will provide you they will provide you if you are working on the soap project if you are working on the soap project then they will provide you the wsdl file wsdl file web service design language they will provide you this wsdl file wsdl file right if you go in the previous class i have explained you in uh, uh, here if you go up in the previous class here if you are using the soap service right you are using the wisdel file wisdel file wsdl file web service description language file the wisdel file the client will provide you the wisdel file and they will ask you uh, go and start doing the performance testing go and do the performance testing okay they will provide you this wisdel file okay so like that this is one wisdel file right and uh, this is the wisdel when you open in the uh, Uh, you know browser you will get the wisdel file like that right so i i can understand your pain right now you are not able to understand right leave it but try to understand what are the things coming in the real time on you know what are the project you will get in the real time okay so this is the one thing which you will get in the real time the wisdel file for the soap services if you are using this soap i think have you noticed the format of the file is xml if you are using the soap service then the format of the file is soap uh, sorry xml right what is the format which i have already explained in the previous class xml you are using 
the response should be in the form of XML. You can see it here. This is in the form of XML. You can see this is the XML uh, response in the form of XML. In the form of XML, right? Now, when in some of the project, in when you uh, you know you start working any organization, they will put it inside the web server, uh, inside the RESTful service project, where you will not get the web application, where you will not get the web service project. You will get the RESTful project, right? So RESTful project means you will, they will provide the, the APIs, the RESTful API like that. So that RESTful API, the, you know, uh, the manual guy who is doing the manual testing, right? So they have, you know, uh, they will provide you the request. They will provide you the request. Whatever the requirement, right, in your project, the manual person or the functional testing person, they will, you know, create the request, you know, by following the requirement, they will create the request and they will provide that request to you that uh, you know the collection with you they will share the collection with you and they will ask you go and start doing the uh, performance testing okay like that if i go here in the postman you can see this is the you know the rest api project if i close let's suppose i am the manual guy i am the functional guy i am the functional guy right i am working in the restful project restful project right so what i will do when and you are uh, you are the performance tester right so what you will uh, what the uh, you know the manual guy you have to communicate with the manual guy that uh, could you please provide the you know uh, the restful api so they will provide you the collection whatever the tool they have used Right, uh, right now I'm using the Postman. The Postman is the, the very famous tool for the API testing. If you want to learn the API testing, so on 13, on Monday, I will start the new batch. Okay, so if you are interested, then drop the message. Okay, so API, so RESTful API, right? So they will provide this collection to you, this uh, Postman to you, and then you have to map this thing into your jmeter into your jmeter let's suppose i am giving this collection to you this particular file this file the user where you have to create the data the same application they are listed here this one i have manually mapped in the postman here same thing uh, this dummy application url i have mapped it here here I have mapped it. And in the real time, uh, in the real time, uh, how the requirements are looks like, if you are, you know, learn the perf um, uh, API testing, in that class I will explain you how the actually requirements is looks like. Let me provide you uh, the, you know, let me show you how the requirements is looks like in the REST API. Because this is the performance testing class, I, um, only show you the high level stuff. How the, you know, functional guy, you know, manual tester guy, you know, mapping the things. You can see the requirement like that. The client will provide you the confluence page or any page where they will provide all the things. Right. They will provide you. This is the restful. Uh, the, uh, this is the book, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, where you can book the create the book, update the book detail where you can fetch the book. Okay, here you can see you have to use the post method. They will provide you the URL with where they will provide you the request body, right? And uh, you can see the get method. And if I will, uh, let me map one thing. Uh, let me map one thing. So uh, first thing, this is your requirement which you will get it by the client if you are doing the functional testing in your project api functional testing which the guy who are attending my api classes they already know this thing okay so uh, like that you will get the requirement by the client okay so uh, you have to map this thing in any tool whatever the tool in your project you are using let's suppose i am using the postman tool okay 
so you can use the get method go and select the get method right i have selected to get method is basically to fetch the data then they have you provided the url which service url you have to use pass that url and then and then uh, uh, you can pass this particular parameter as a query parameter okay you can pass it here and when i call you can see the response you will get the response right so like that the functional guy is mapping their requirement okay now come to our point this is the rest api which you will get uh, currently you are working in the rest api project so do not get confused when i am switching to the web application to the restful so do not understand i mean uh, uh, at that time you can easily uh, you know understand the thing that i am using the restful service okay at that time do not get confused why i i uh, suddenly i have taking this example okay so uh, one thing if you are using the restful service the response is in json right so if you go through the document here you can see if you are using the restful web service the response in the json 95% the response would be in json and rarely you will get xml right the xml it is used in the soap service in the restful web service we are using this method post get put patch and delete but in the soap service we are using only post method only post method we are not using any other service any other method we are only using the post if you are working in the uh if you are working in the uh, soap service if you are working in the soap project okay now now i told you you are working in the rest service so response in the json so similarly here you can see the response in the form of json here you can see which you are getting by the server so copy this thing right and here you have to write the json assertion here you have to pass the path the json path you have to pass okay so we will take the help of one tool json extractor json extractor is one tool json extractor online tool where you can write the json path uh, let me open guys one more thing is still uh, like uh, some of the student has not make the uh, payment actually so please uh, make the payment okay still i can see there are multiple student who has not pay, uh, done the payment so please make the payment today uh, after this class please please guys okay so uh, this is the tool uh, where you can you know uh, write the json path so let's suppose this is the response which you are get it by the server right and let's suppose you want to access the first name right so using the dollar dot using the dollar dot you can access you want to access the first name type first name you can see it here on the right hand side you are able to fetch the john right if you want to fetch the last name copy the last name and type it here you are able to fetch the last name da if you want to fetch the age copy the age and pass it here age oh, sorry age now guys uh, you want to fetch the city now tell me how i can write the path who is attending my api classes uh please uh, uh please do not give the answer the person uh, the who is new in the performance testing they can give the answer uh, based on your assume how i can access this city yeah with the address address also i have to put the address okay so guys uh, i'm um, one simple example i am giving you 
one simple example mm. you uh, you are living in home right your uh, your own home right uh, you forget your id card in your uh, bedroom in your bedroom you forget your id card the employee id card yeah you uh, uh, you come to the outside of the gate you come to the uh, you know come to the outside of the gate so there are four layer this is your uh, uh, this is your bedroom okay this is your bedroom okay this is your bedroom where your id card is there okay and after then this is the dining room dining room okay this is the dining room and after then uh, this is the you know uh, the main gate okay after then you are here you are here you are here now tell me you want to take the employee card employee card now how you can access this employee card which is inside the bedroom tell me how you can access simple daily life example yeah first we need to enter to our home after that we have to travel to our bedroom and we have to fetch that card that's it exactly so first you have to go to your main gate and even after coming to the reach to the main gate even you can't uh, take your id card right then you have to come to the dining room and then you have to come to the bedroom then you can take your card same situation here same situation here if you want to get the city if you want to fetch the city first you have to access the parent level first you have to access the address and then you can access the city right so first you can access the city copy the city name uh, it is case sensitive so always try to copy now you can see all the city what are the things inside the city, uh, address it get stored you can see it here you are able to fetch now you want to access the city right so dot city you can see nara right you want to access the postal code right dot postal code correct now tell me i want to access this number what a uh, json path i have to write it here tell me it's very simple and straightforward dollar dot uh, phone number first uh, parent is there na I, I i am not able to see that thing we have to write first thing like parent mm -hmm. yes first you have to access the parent one so you can see the uh, in the parent one don't have the sorry phone number don't have the any parent Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. So yeah. you can use uh, like that, and then you can see it is an array. So oh. one more example I am taking here. Earlier it was JSON object. This is known as a JSON object. If you are using anything as a curly bracket and close the thing, that is known as a JSON object. One more thing, guys. One more thing, guys. if you are writing the json object it is start with curly bracket and end with the curly bracket that is known as a json object if it is an array here you can see it is an array symbol it is known as a json array json object means single object json array uh, sorry uh, json object means single object and json array means we can store multiple object inside the array right and this is known as a key and this is known as a value key and value key and value first name is the one key and the value first last name is the one key and value 
एज इज वन की एंड द वैल्यू एड्रेस इज वन की एंड दिज ऑल आर द वैल्यू ओके सो दिस इज एन एरे दिस इज एन एरे फ्रॉम दिस एरे यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस द नंबर हाउ यू कैन एक्सेस इफ यू आर यूजिंग द एरे देन यू हैव टू यू नो you have to give the location of uh, your address what is your location right so in array in array it start with a zero if you are using json in array so length is two there are two object this is one this is one and this is two there are two object right but index index means location the index is 0 and it is 1 index is 0 and 1 the length is 1 and 2 the index is 0 and 1 length start from 1 and index start from the 0 right so uh, the thing is you want to access you want to access this number right so here you, if i if you type here dot number dot number you can see no match no match why because there are multiple numbers are there inside this json array you have to ask that which location it is which location it is so it is at the zero index it is the zero index means location it is at the index of zero that's why you have to declare one array and here you have to pass zero and then you can see you are able to fetch the data right now yeah, because actually if, this array concept is not understood can you repeat once like uh, phone number uh, what we have called uh, this braces okay this. let me explain you the array concept again okay let me remove this thing here first thing uh, how you can create the json object right json object this is the json object if anything you are using curly bracket json object this is known as a json object curly open curly bracket and close curly bracket right this is the json object after then you are using key and value this is the syntax of that key and the value this is the syntax of that right this is the syntax of that here you can see with the same syntax i have used this is the json object and inside the json object i have used the key and value key and value key and value right if you have the question where is the key value let's suppose uh, we are doing uh, let's suppose let's take the example of uh, make my trip let me book the ticket i am taking one example let's suppose you have the make my trip rest api project let's suppose we have the rest uh, make my trip rest api project uh yeah no no oh, okay that's it here you can see uh if i click on the first name last name mail country code mobile number email id right so this is known as a key in the back end in the rest api it looks like that it looks like that we are passing the data like that as a key value here in the ui you are passing like the field like the field okay so this is the key first name and the middle name last name and this is the key the mail like uh, the you know uh, uh gender it is the field right the country code uh, mobile number and email id so same thing here 
okay this is the key and here you have to pass the value which value here you have to pass you are testing with a different value right so this is the value yeah yes okay, okay. so in the back end in the front end it will looks like that in the web application but in the back end in the rest api it will looks like that okay so okay. when you come to the api testing class i will explain that thing in more detail this is the separate uh, uh, you know uh, uh, huge topic actually okay i in yeah. um, uh, we have to understand the mapping concept and then you can easily understand this thing okay yeah okay okay so what you can do this is the json object right now why we are using the array array means array means to store the similar kind of element let's suppose uh, we have a string array string array we have integer array we have a uh, uh, object array object array how you can create like that if you are creating uh, like that uh, if you are creating a string object string like a uh, array like that a r r pass the variable name and where you can only store the string value like vikas which is start with the double quote that is uh, consider as a string value uh, mohan right that is the string array right here we have stored the uh, the same kind of data type the string data type okay and here i am creating one integer array int array right where i can store only uh, the integer type okay? and we have the object array object array right inside the object array object array object array we can store we can store uh, the string also string also string also and uh, you can string also and the integer also right same thing here uh, uh, so uh, let me explain you one thing this is string array i am taking as an example i have here i have store one more person like uh, uh, vinay okay vinay and here i am creating one more person rahul and here i am creating one more person storing this string array sonam okay okay now i have created uh, you know a uh, string array inside that i have stored the string right so the length of a string is 1 2 3 4 5 there are five of the uh, string i have stored the length is 5 right the length is 5 length is equal to 5 oh ho oh. Where it's gone? Where it's gone? The value control there. Oh man! Give me a second. Let me again create, or I can take A B C D right, and I can take uh, like that. Okay. okay. Like that. Okay. okay. so the length of array is 1 2 3 4 5 <laughs> and the index is is start from the zero index means the location of this particular element this is zero this is the one this particular uh, uh, location is one and if this particular location is two this one is three and this one is four right if i add one more person right one more person h h h so the length is 
length it will get change 6 and the location is now 5. Clear? Now I want to access this particular one. So I have to, you know, uh, first go to that particular location and then access. So that's why the same thing I have performed here. I want to access this number. Okay. First, I have to find the location of that particular element. So the location is zero. That's why I have used zero index of zero. If I want to access this particular number, so it is at zero and this particular location is one. So I have to pass one here. You can see. Now it's clear, sir. Yeah. Now it's clear because thank you. OK, now come to the point. We have this response. We have this response, right? So copy this response, paste it here. OK, uh, it is in the single line. Let me use the uh, JSON editor online to beautify the code. Beautify where it is. OK, let me JSON editor online. In the real time, we are always using the software to make the things fast. OK. Uh, here, paste it here, right? Now, tell me I want to get this name. Tell me how I can. Dollar dot uh, okay. data. Dollar, dollar dot, dot data. Data. Dollar dot data. OK, fine. And then? dot uh, name dot name correct exactly correct right you are able to fetch right so now this is your json path copy this path here and put it here in the json assertion here right copy this path and put it here so when your code when your request will execute the assertion will go into the response and find this path and get that value and pass your expected value here. What value you want to pass? So let's suppose your expected is this value. Okay, so copy this value and pass that value here. Oh, 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 oh. What happened? It is the exact value. Expected value you have passed. What is your path here? What is your path? This one is the path. Okay, pass it here. Okay, now if you execute, let execute and let's see what happened. Can you see it get passed? Get user by ID, it get passed. Right, your assertion get passed. If you let's suppose change the name, something invalid. You have passed. OK, and let's try to execute. Can you see it here? Correct. Yes, it's correct. Right. So basically JSON assertion uh, we are using in the case of RESTful API because the response is in the JSON format. Because the response is in the JSON format. So you can use in the uh, this JSON assertion in the case of when uh, the JSON response when it is REST API. Here you can you know validate any things. You have to write the you know path for that and you can verify. But this thing again, this is the functional testing, right? Agree or not? Agree? Yes. Right. So this thing uh, we are not doing. I mean, sometimes we need that. That's why uh, the J meter added this thing. OK, but generally if you think it is required, then you can add. Otherwise, don't waste time. OK, and then we have some more assertion. If you go here, we have some more assertion like HTML assertion here you can see HTML assertion right and HTML assertion means 
you want to verify when you connect with the server when you connect with the server you want to verify the response should be in the form of html it's coming in the form of html or not then pass the test case right so let's try to use and let's see it get pass or fail it get fail let me uh, correct this uh, value what was the value let me correct this value let me paste it here okay now let me execute now you can see it get failed why because your response is in the form of json it is not html it is html tell me guys it is html no it's not html it is not an html okay that's why if you want to validate the assertion like uh, the response which you get it from the server it is in the form of html or it is form of xml or not so in that case use that particular assertion let's suppose i'm using uh, mm, let's suppose use this jetpack store this one okay uh, let's try to uh, we have one application let me map this thing let me manually map this thing okay so i will create one request i will add one request map it here and as as right and uh, copy and paste it here resource okay and uh, home page pet store pet store home page okay it is pet store home page okay let me move it here let me move it here oh why i am not able to move save it and let me move it here okay fine now let me add the same assertion here html assertion select that check box and let me disable from here okay and let me execute oh ho form in the form of html ideally network section and if i click on here go to response it is in the form of html doc type html why it's not taking it get failed come for the let me check doc type what is the doc type here doc type is html html again get fail something we are doing wrong here is error only error only no threshold threshold is a different concept error warning no 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 i think it is in the form of mix up of the thing let me select this thing option uh, let me select omit and then run mm, let me go here and check mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is not in xml html then not hmm it's failing yes html what thing we are doing wrong this thing is a different concept uh, right uh, j3 file this is the different concept 
this is not an maximum let me save actually let me save uh, if i have not saved let me save and run it again fail it's obviously not a xml it's clearly say but let's try yeah okay leave this thing i will explain this thing to you in another class okay i have to find or this part okay uh, i can use the make my trip mm, i can do the this thing okay uh, let's try to use the make my trip example okay so uh, uh, let me mm, one time let me do it okay uh, let me take the make my trip url let me go here and create one more request sampler http sampler move it to here okay pass it here and copy from here okay pass it here okay and then okay i have used this particular request make my trip make my okay now at that particular sensor if it is work let's see mm, html sensor selected the html let me disable this thing oh okay disable this thing and let me execute mm, 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 mm. okay i will check that why it's failing because you can see it here and let me try with x html it is the mix of uh, xml and the html that's why it's showing x html mm, it again failing ah uh, no problem but uh, we are not using in the real time but i will explain you what is the the reason behind that why it's failing actually everything is fine actually i i'm i don't know why it's failing actually everything is a uh, simple and straightforward actually okay but anyway i will explain you but uh, in the real time we are not using in the real time only using this two this two okay so this is all about uh, the assertion the assertion uh, which you have to use in the j meter right so whenever you think you have to add the assertion you can add that assertion okay so in the document i have uh, written the same thing here response assertion duration assertion uh, size assertion right uh, xml assertion html assertion same thing here if it is the response in the html uh, xml then you have to uh, go and use the xml assertion this one if xml you have to verify it is in the form of xml then you have to select xml assertion so if the response is come in the xml then your test case will get pass your test case will get pass i have one example let me show you uh, if it is working there uh, i am not sure uh, i am not sure uh, i want to save okay uh, the, i have one uh, the assertion the xml assertion let me execute so because one this one doubt here so yeah. basically we are using html assertion and xml assertion in order to check the format of our response only right not to check the content inside that no no we are not uh, checking the content we are only testing the format the format which we are getting by the server it is in the form of html or not that's it and uh, yeah we have some three salt concept is there that i will explain you like uh, some of the things are not in the form of html so we can ignore up to this level right so for that purpose we have to use okay and uh, here you can see this is one xml project uh, soap project this is one soap project where i am passing the body in the form of soap you can see it here soap 
earlier i was passing in the form of jason have you seen uh, have you see the difference earlier i have used the rest api and i was passing in the form of a uh, key and value i was passing like that right uh, created the json request here you can see it here this is your soap service and here uh, like that you have to pass in the form of xml right so let me add uh, the assertion here and check uh, let me add the assertion here xml assertion and let me execute let's see it's uh, yeah here you can see it get pass the xml assertion because the response in in the form of xml right i don't know why it's failing in the case of html when i'm adding the html okay because in yeah. real time like uh, from where we will get to know like what format will be of our response it will yeah. be html actually okay uh, okay simple concept and straight forward right let me explain you if you are using web application project web application project the uh, you will get the response in the form of html clear first thing clear yes like if you use any application maximum you will get in the form of xml or it is like mix up of xml plus html right some of the time it is the mix up of the things right in second thing in the case of soap if you are working in the soap project soap service project soap service project then you will always get the response in the form of xml not in the form of json only xml okay if you are using the restful services then you will get the response in the form of json or it depends if you are sending the request if you are using the request if you are using the request json then you will get the json response if you are using xml then you will get the xml but generally 90% if you are using the restful web service the response should be in the form of json only clear yes 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 simple you can identify and even if you are thinking how i can identify if you go and check if you go and check here you can see html that means it is in the form of html doc type html the response in the form of html if you go and check the response here which i have taken the previous example of uh, the soap service if i execute if you go to the view result tree response data can you see there is not html this is the xml this will comes with the soap envelope soap body it start with soap envelope soap body and the keys and the value you will not see the tag here as a html if you if it is html then you can see the tag as a html okay and if it is a json it is then clear right it's clearly say it is totally different the json one right yes sir. okay so let's move to the another thing guys one again i am requesting to you uh, if you have not make the payment please make the payment okay so today end of the day please make the payment so already i have given you the sufficient day okay so uh, and please join the whatsapp group which uh, 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 i have created so that you will get all the notification all the you know the query you will put it here you can join this group okay or you can uh, if anyone want to help they know the solution they can also you know provide the solution 
Okay. So. I'm able to join. Yeah, I, uh, I will help you. I will help you. Okay. And let's try to understand the next concept. The next concept is HTTP status code. The APIs guys who is taking my API classes, they already know about that in detail. <clears throat> they already know. But uh, I have to uh, give you the high level things here. In the interview, they will ask you, what are the status code uh, you have uh, used actually? What are the status code? Okay. Generally, we have only three types. Successful, the client error, and server error. Okay. But you can see also uh, the 100 series that is informational and the, uh, the 300 series that is redirection. But it is you will not face this type of OK. You will get only a 200 series, 400 series and 500 series. OK, let's try to understand what did you mean by the 200 series? OK. When you will get the 200 series, if you are not able to understand this concept, then everything is waste. Even the same concept is used in the API testing. In the API testing. Right in the restful and the SOAP API testing. Same concept we will also use in the performance testing. OK, so that's why it's necessary to understand this concept. OK, let's try to understand. 200. 200 series uh, means when anything is successfully get created, updated, deleted, or a fetch, that in that case you will get 200 series. Successful action, either it is a deletion, either it is creation, either it is updation, either it is to fetching the data, any action you will get the 200 series. Right? Let's suppose here, uh, let's suppose, let's suppose, uh, give me a second. Let me remove all the things from here. Uh, uh, get the user's data. Get the user's data here, right? get the user's data and when I let me use change into the one, right? So get method is used to fetch the data. Agree? And this particular get call fetching the data which is created inside this resource, this user's resource, right? Correct? Now, when I call this particular request, if you go to the view result tree, uh, XML get fail. Let me dis uh, delete this thing. Remove, remove. We don't need, uh, we don't require anymore. No, is that one? It's clear. Okay. Let me re execute this thing. If you go to the here, you can see the response code is 200. You are able to successfully fetch the data. That's why. The server will return the 200. It is in the protocol which we have to follow. The developer has to follow while implementing this particular service. They has to follow. OK, when you are trying to fetch the data based on the ID. Here you can see uh, you will get all the data in the form of array all the data, but in this request you are getting individual data. Why? Because you have used the ID. You are filter outing the data based on the ID, right? And when you see it here, uh, when you see it here in the view result tree, uh, the response code is 200. That means you are able to successfully fetch the data. Right? Let me create the data. Let me create the data. 
I will go here, add the new sample here. I am using the rest service. OK, uh, create the give the name, create the user. Create the user, OK. And I will put it here, right? And what is the uh, URL? I have to use this one, OK? Pass that URL here and HTTP, OK, and S. And here I have to pass the path. What path is using this path where I have to create the data, right? And it is the uh, uh, you are creating the data, right? So you have to pass the body. It is the post method the post method, right? So you have to select the post method, right? And if you are using the post method, that means you are creating the data inside this particular resource, right? You have to select the request body and then you have to pass the request body as per the requirement. Let's suppose your requirement is you have to pass the name, email ID, gender and the status. Let me pass the email ID here. Uh, let me use the email ID here. Rahul test at the rate one two. Sorry, at the rate gmail.com. OK, so as per the requirement, you have to use the uh, the uh, name property, email, gender and the status. OK, you have mapped the uh, the you know uh, the post call right and save it. Save it. Right now, uh, uh, I think it's required the token also because you are creating the data in some other server. You have to take the permission actually. For that, you have to uh, get the token. How you can get the token? If you go to this particular site, I will share you this site to you so that you can do the practice where you can map the things. Okay. And if you go here, click here to get the uh, token. If you click here, you uh, select any of the Gmail account in your case and you will get the token. Right, get the token. Now I have to pass the token in JMeter. What you have to do, go to the config element and HTTP header manager. I will explain you separately regarding the config element. Don't worry. HTTP uh, element and add here property authorization. And here pass the bearer. And pass the token. Now you can create the data. Now if I hit this request. Give me a second. It's not running actually. No, yeah, it's running. Create the user data. Something we have wrong map. What is the mistake guys? What is the mistake? Where is the mistake? Body, go to the body. Uh, URL is correct. The body is correct. Uh, it's showing the error message as a 422. Uh, fill name can't be something we are doing wrong. Everything is correct. Better manager. Let me value take the value from here. Sometimes it will be the spelling mistake actually. Authorization, authorization, right? So take the value from here in the postman and pass it here. Here and then you can mm, pass the bearer. So, token I have already passed bearer cash. 
token is correct and is there any space no yeah everything is pass correct and let me again call let's see it creating the data some syntax error we have uh, is correct mill is correct at the rate rahul is correct mill let me execute the same thing here in the postman if i execute the same thing here you are able to create the data here you are able to create the data here but the same oh ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho i got it got it content type you have to pass you have to ask to the server which content you want to pass uh, what is the format of your request content type you have to pass content type i will explain you what did you mean by the content type later on i will explain you don't worry content type here you can see content type okay copy this thing and use it here okay use it here now let me run now you can see it get pass and user get created right now you can see uh 201 201 response is not 201 so you have the question in previous case it was 200 now it is 201 when you are creating why so it totally depends on the requirement if your client is asking whenever you are creating any data uh, i want to return 201 then the developer has to implement 201 if the client is asking 200 then 200 okay but the thing is the 200 series is to successful code successful code that's why you can see your uh, you know it is in the green mark the green mark right so this is um, you know uh, the requirement the uh, if you get the data successfully return the 200 right this is the part of requirement whenever you successfully get the data right similarly we have delete the data if you want to delete the data uh, the created data go to sampler and select the delete here select the delete here and uh, let me map this thing i want to delete uh, okay so let me pass i want to delete the the id 1 id 11 okay so i will pass it here pass here and what is the body as p s right delete the data delete the user delete the user okay delete the user now let me delete now you can see 204 no content right so this is uh, decided by the client either it could be 200 either it could be 204 let me explain you in which case uh, if you are trying to fetch the data if you are trying to give, trying to fetch the data using get call so you will only get 200 as per the requirement even in the requirement also the client if you are trying to create the data using post method you will get two status code either 200 either 201 but it depends on the requirement which one uh, which one the client want which status code the client want to implement that depends on the client not uh, the application so uh, this depends on the client so developer has implement the same thing okay now in second case uh, patch patch output method right in both the case we will return 200 in the case of delete either we can return 200 either 204 it depends on the requirement how the, uh, which one client want to return which one client want to return but the thing is you will get the successful status code that is 200 series 
200 series okay now any question regarding to success code or i can proceed with the client error any question if you are not able to understand then please let me know guys because this thing is very important that's why i'm asking you if you are not able to understand i will again explain you no worry yes guys yes sir no so that i can proceed further yeah done so you don't have the confusion why it's returning 200 why it's returning 201 why it's returning uh, 204 it's clear right and one more thing if you are uh, if uh, the if it is returning 200 then along with 200 always return okay only okay not any other string if it is returning 201 then it always return created if it is turning 204 then it is no content why because 204 no content because when you see here uh, you can see in the response data there is no content in the response if they are returning anything after deleting the user like you have successfully deleted the user right in that case they will use the 200 not 204 the 204 is used whenever you you know you don't want to return anything in the response but your action is successfully performed clear so if you say like 200 if the interviewer say if 200 comes with uh, uh, no content it can it be possible no it can't okay so 204 is always comes with the uh, no content always comes with the 204 200 always comes with the okay and created always comes with the 201 why it is created why because we are creating the data right that's why 201 created here sometime in this case in the patch method you will also get 204 i know this thing because i have worked this thing in you know very deep level along with the client so that's why i know this concept very well right sometime if you are updating anything and the as per the requirement they don't want to return anything in the response but your action is successfully performed right in that case sometimes they will also return 204 no content it totally depends on the requirement but uh, the requirement can't say if you are trying to get the data you can't return 400 it never happen it never happen then it is a bug clear now i am moving to the uh, the client error the client error let's try to understand the same thing here guys whatever the things i am explaining you if you have you noticed or not i don't know but if you go and take any of the application let me hit the make my trip okay if you go here and inspect and go to the network section and if you hit this url if you hit this url you can see the status here can you see it here can you see it here guys the status right so you can see it here when you go to the header you can see 200 status code that it means that the the server has successfully fetched the data server had successfully fetch the data you can take any application okay now let's try to understand let's try to understand um, the server error sorry uh, client error 
the 400 series means client error. 400 series means client error. We have multiple client error like 400 bad request, 401 unauthorized, 403 forbidden, 404 not found, 4045 method not allowed, 411 length required, 414 URI not too long, 415 unsupported media, 409 conflict in which we are using measurely this four. Okay, let's try to understand what is this thing. Okay. Is that fine if I explain you this thing in the postman? Because I don't like JMeter UI every time I have to go here. Okay, so I will explain this thing in the postman, right? Uh, what I'm doing here, mm, 404 that is bad request bad request means anything you are passing the bad request bad request means anything you are passing not as per the requirement you are not mapping the things correctly in that case you will get the bad request let's suppose to create the json object you need comma if you have the next statement is there if you have the next statement, you have to end with the comma. Otherwise, it will give you the error. So I remove the comma. So it is the bad syntax, right? So if I call, you will get uh -huh, 401 unauthorized. Let me pass the correct code here. Uh, give me a second. Uh, let me pass the correct code here. Let me take the code, the token, and let me go here. Pass it here and let me even call. Mm, give me a second. Let me again generate the token. Regenerate the token. It's, I think that token is get expired. So copy that token. Let me again pass it here. Say. Literally, man, user will push the second. Okay, okay. Here I have added the authorization token. That's why. Let me pop. And here it, it gets appended. That's the correct bearer token I have. Okay. Here I have to use B error, I think. Error, and then let me call. Why this thing is not working here? Uh, B error. Because you can see in uh, email ID you are using one variable. No, that is not an issue. That is not an issue. It's not an issue. Okay, let me create the phrase request. Post method, pass the URL, go to the body section, go and select raw and take the body from here and pass it here. Let me select the JSON content type. Let me pass uh, the static uh, that uh, static value, the hard coded value, Vikasa uh, email.com. Okay, and here I can pass something like uh, uh, ta -ta 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 token. Okay, the beer token. Let me take it from here. Uh, guys, do not leave the class. We have very important concept which we have to listen the client error. Mm. Okay, let me call. Now, oh, let me first create the request. It's created. Mm. Mm. It's created. Let me, if I'm using anything wrongly, 
okay no worry we can take some other example mm, give me a second oh sorry sorry we have some other example also here you can take it and you can call it it's get created let's suppose i'm not passing the correct thing here you can see 400 bad request 400 bad request so anything you are not passing as per the requirement you, you the you know the functional guys if they are not passing as per the requirement let's suppose they have passed the wrong syntax here or any mandatory thing they are not passing okay so in that case you will get 400 bad request anything which you are not map correctly as per the requirement in that case you will get 400 bad request 400 bad request unauthorized if you are using the token if you are using the token and if you are using the you know wrong token let's suppose this token is invalid i pass the invalid token in that case you will get unauthorized error message 401 unauthorized that is known as a client error if you are passing or you not pass the token and token is mandatory to create the request and you are not passing right in that case you will get the error message as a 401 unauthorized same thing if you do it here let suppose i will go here and let me incorrect the token okay and uh, let me recall you can see in the create call authorization failed and simple body 401 you can see the jmeter only understand the success status code the 200 201 and 204 apart from that all the test case status code get failed you can see it here 401 404 400 when come when you are passing the wrong syntax anything you are passing not as per the requirement in that case you will get 400 bad request if you are passing the wrong authorization token then you will get 401 right now 403 403 means you are passing the right token right access token but you are trying to access the some other data you are trying to fetch the some other user data right in that case you will get the 403 for written uh let me show you 403 when you will get it here so um, <clears throat> give me a second yeah um, let's suppose this is the in the real time uh give me a second okay so uh, 403 means when you are trying to fetch the other user data other user data means i, I uh, what i am doing here i am trying to access your uh, like suvendu data i am trying to access the suvendu data right in that case you will get the 403 forbidden like uh, the hacker are using okay so uh, uh, in that case you will get the uh, 403 like this is the valid user credential to generate the token here you can see you can generate the token right and uh, like the third person come and they want to generate the token by using his uh, like uh, the some email username and the password yet see He, what he is trying to do he is trying to access the token 
by passing the some you know their user uh, user name and they are uh, trying to access the data correct so you will get this thing 403 when one user trying to access the another user data right in that case you will get the 403 for written error message i think uh, in the real time when you are doing the uh, testing uh, i think you have seen this type of error message in the real time have you seen this type of message in the ui when you are performing anything when you are doing the manual testing have you seen this type of error message in your application or not the forbidden yes yes so that means you have something did right you are trying to access the some other things which you don't have the access you are trying to access some data which you don't have the access in that case you will get 403 for widen right now we have a uh, 404 not found so 404 not found means uh, you have created you fetch the data right here you fetch the data right let's suppose this is the id 13 which is exist inside this particular uh, users okay so if i pass the 13 here if i pass 13 here let me disable other thing if i pass 13 here right so this id is exist correct right if i call you can see it here you result tree what get fail oh jason assertion get fail let me disable the jason assertion now let me execute you can see uh, the 13 id id 13 get fetch right so if you are trying to pass anything which is not exist inside this user that particular user right let's suppose i am trying to uh pass this id the invalid id 1399 okay if i use this thing right you can see you will get the error message resource not found and here 404 if you are trying to access anything which is not exist into your server into that particular resource in that case you will get the error message as a 404 not found if anything you are trying to access let's suppose i am trying to delete the data so you have to pass the id here if it is valid id then it will get deleted successfully if it is not valid id then it will return the error message that uh, server is not able to find that particular id have you seen this type of feature like uh, uh, in the application you are trying to pass some invalid data you are getting something like not found have you seen in the web application yeah seen right. yeah, so, when we search, search with any name if it is not found like no right. found so in the back end it's calling to uh, you know it's back in the back end it's returning the error message as a 404 not found 404 not found i am not asking only uh, you know the, that particular email id anything which you are trying to search that is not exist you will get the error message 404 not found let's suppose i am passing the valid data but this particular resource it not exist inside this particular service this particular resource is not exist inside this particular service okay if i call you can see it here 
404 right so if you i think you will also if you go i think you also see that page 404 not found this type of page in the real time i think during your testing i think i'm 100% sure that you will see that page okay so that means any things you are trying to do that is not exist okay uh method not allowed i think that is not related to the performance testing uh, but uh, this things comes uh, like uh, if you are trying to do the action using the if you are trying to create the data but using the post method instead of post method you use some other method like get method right so in that case you will get a method not allowed because that particular method is used to fetch the data not to oh, sorry to create the data right in that case you will get method not allowed okay um this thing ignore which you will not use in the uh, performance testing i think you will not get in the but let me explain you uh 411 uh, this is the url if you want to learn more so this is the url where you can refer this thing okay uh here you can see all the status code you can see the things which i have explained you that only is highlighted the star mark because this thing 90 Five percent you will use in the real time, right? The the four zero nine conflict is there. The conflict means anything you have created already, anything you have created already, and with the same thing, if you are trying to do to create, in that case you will get four zero nine conflict. But it depends on your requirement. If the developer if your requirement in such a way that they want to implement this functionality then it work otherwise it will not work right so you can see there are multiple uh, client error here but these four are important you can see the success 20201 and the 204 and here the client error the server error okay the server error okay which we will discuss in the when we apply the load when we apply the load okay not now okay any question clear and in the document i have explained the things you can see it here client error the forbidden right and the server error what are the reason to get the server error okay in the document i have explained the things very neat and clean way you can go through the document and you can refer the document okay clear sir the server error is pending uh, which i will explain you when i will apply the load on the server at that time you will get this thing okay up to here any question in coming class i will discuss the controller what did you mean by the controller if you go here and uh, uh, right click controller is there right we will discuss controller so guys please make the payment who has not made the payment please so thank you guys if you have any question then you can ask me and here for me okay uh, uh vikas amo here uh, i just yeah. have in, uh, in understanding the uh, hierarchy of test plan like uh, what is the difference of adding uh, uh, result or let's say uh, assertion and under the thread or at the test plan level uh, come again come again sir uh, can you can you just go to the geometer uh, so that i can explain okay yeah uh, yeah so, so uh, uh, give me a second sir uh, uh, the class is over whoever want to quit the call you can this is the query session. You can discuss the query with me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, Amun sir, go ahead. Okay, you have shared your screen. I can see one screen is shared by someone. No, because I didn't ask any question. Some, some other person is asking, I think so. Some person was asking one question. Amul, uh, I think you are asking some question. I can't hear you. You are muted, I think. No, uh, sorry. Uh, I was speaking on mute. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit of a confusion like uh, what is the difference uh, like adding the uh, listener at the thread group level, uh, this one and uh, uh, the uh, like a uh, listener we are adding at the thread level ah you can add the listener inside the uh, let me share my screen okay. yeah so here you can see uh, you can add the listener inside the let me add the things okay and then you have the clear picture so okay, this I'm listener i have clear. added can you just show it again sorry I am not able to see your screen. Okay. Now? Yes, I can see. So you can see it here. The listener we can add at the in you know uh, at the thread plan level also. Go and add the listener. The first thing, right? And the second thing, uh, if you add the listener inside that, whatever the request you have added, it will applicable for all. Right, all the result will display here in the accumulated form. This thing is clear. Yeah. Now the second thing, if you have added the multiple thread group inside one test plan, if you added the multiple thread group inside the one uh, test plan, and you want to, uh, you know, uh, need only one listener for both the thread group, right? In that case, you can add the listener at the test plan level also. Uh, so, because in that case, that result, whatever will the result under that uh, uh, result tree or let's aggregate or summary report. So that will be uh, average of all that third group, right? This one will be the average of these two. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not this one. This one will because, show uh, only. Yesterday I was uh, yesterday I was trying to implement the same thing. So in that case, I was not able to. Did it like uh, under uh, under that uh, uh, listener which I added under the test plan? So in that case, uh, like I'm not able to get value whether uh, that is uh, like average one or uh, which one. So okay, yeah, okay. It's now it's clear. clear? Now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, other one having any question? Yes, sir. Tell me if anyone having question, then let me know. Yes, because I want to ask about assertions. Like, yeah, what I've understood that uh, assertion filter out the request and then it shows the uh, filter out final request as per the assertion selected. Is it so like? Uh, uh, OK, let me explain you because you are in the API class. So let me explain the things like uh, in a very simple way. You are creating the uh, here. Okay, you are creating the employee. Uh, okay, let me use this one. Otherwise, I have to start the server. Okay, this thing is not create user body body is correct. Let me create possible entity email id i have to pass unique actually that's why it's giving there and okay now this result you will get it in the response right assertion means after getting this result as a you know you want to verify the data which you received by the server is correct or not right so in the api testing right using javascript how you are doing you are matching in the test section you are writing the actual and expected you are verifying this thing, correct? Yes. Right. The same thing here also. The same thing here also. We having the multiple assertion. Using the assertion, you can add JSON assertion. We have uh, written the uh, JSON path and passed the expected value here. 
okay so it it like filter out the final result and then it show us no filter out what did you mean by the filter out here like any expected value we have given like duration we have given so it will check from all the request and it will show us the no 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 no, no sir first listen this particular request i have added inside this sorry this particular assertion let's suppose i am adding duration assertion so this particular assertion is applicable for this request not for the all so it will check for this particular request not it will filter out the thing it will go and simply check for this thing if you add this duration assertion at the thread group level then it will applicable for all okay okay so under thread group we have one test case like get the user data so under that if we add any assertion so it will be applicable to that uh, let's try to understand one more time so this is the request inside the request right click here i am adding the assertion as a duration okay i have added right and i have added a uh, 10000 so this particular assertion will applicable for this particular request the first thing now if you are not adding this assertion at particular request for the particular request you want to add you know apply for all all the request if you want to apply then what you are doing here you are adding the assertion at the uh, at the thread group level you can go it here and uh, go to the assertion and go and add where is the duration duration so whatever the request you have added inside this thread inside this thread group this particular assertion will applicable for all Okay. clear okay clear we can individually add and we can also declare this thing at the global level that is inside the test plan sorry inside the thread group you can directly add so that it will applicable for all you don't have to individually write for everyone correct okay yes and thread group is like combination of all the request and yeah thread group is the combination of sample it is like khichdi <laughs> right khichdi so uh, you can add sample listener config element post processor assertion timer there are lot of thing so it is just like that okay thank you uh, vikas uh, amulya just uh, one second yeah. uh, so just simon uh, like uh, in rare uh, in live uh, in case of live projects so uh, as i mentioning like uh, we are adding uh, we can add the listener at uh, like a thread group level as or, or at uh, like a uh, uh, sample level sample so level. It, uh, yeah so in ke, uh, in reality or in case of live projects uh, which uh, level we prefer or uh, is it at sample level or uh, like uh, uh, le, uh, what happen in the real time let's suppose uh, we have the uh, suppose you are working in one project and you have the five requests Uh, request one, uh, request two, sorry, request two, uh, request three, uh, request four, request four, request five. You have the five requests inside the thread group. Clear? Now, if the client is asking that every request will take less than ten second. then we are not going to add individually what we can do we can add this thing at the thread group level because this thing is common it totally depends on the scenario okay it totally depends on the scenario if your requirement is asking for this particular request you have to check uh, the time if it is taking more than 10 second or more than 20 second then fail this test case then you can add the uh, you know uh, the assertion in at the sample level if it is anything is the common right you can add that thing at the thread group level or the 
controller level we have one more concept controller that i will explain you in uh, next saturday class okay because in the thread group we have multiple things so if you add at the thread group level then it will be applicable for all right so uh, we have the controller things in the picture right so uh, controller here controller right so the thing is if anything is common then you can add that thing at the global level that is at the controller level or the thread group level so that it is applicable for the other also clear yeah yeah uh, i just put up one message in chat box can you please check uh, whether that my understanding is correct or not in case of throughput Okay, throughput is the number of sample per unit time. Uh, the total time number of sample. The throughput is number of sample per unit time. The per unit time it might be minutes, hour, and second also. Yeah, that uh, calculation. Okay, depends on the calculation and total time. The total so, time is. So, so can, can I say uh, means uh, can I can uh, calculate the total time as like the number of uh, sample which are executed uh, multiplied by uh, average taken time by one sample, or maybe say you can say average take, uh, time taken by uh, taken by that particular sample. So can I say like uh, if I put that value of number of uh, total time uh, as a number of sample multiplied by average time, so uh, both the total uh, number of sample will get cancelled, and I can say uh, there will be remaining like. Uh, One divided by uh, average time uh, taken by one sample. So can I yeah. say throughput is inverse of uh, average time sample, average of time sample? Inverse means direct, indirectly proportional, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It means I can say uh, uh, divide that uh, means one divided by uh, 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 average time for that particular time of sample. Mm. Let me take an example. So you have okay. uh, that geometer open. Okay, let me uh, do it here. Okay. Yeah. I'll go so to any, what uh, you are trying to say? Up. Let me apply the load of five user. Okay. Now tell me what you are trying to say. Uh, let me execute. Okay. I have executed. Now you. Oh, oh. why out all get filled? Some yeah, assertion I have added. Okay. But no worry. You can so, see it here. Here we can see the table. Yeah. So. Uh, for the first uh, under the first level, so you can see it is taking uh, uh, 481 sample. Okay, so uh, mm. if I divide one divided by 481, so I will be getting uh, throughput as 3.5. Yeah, you can. The average time taken, it is one uh, one of the shortcut formula to calculate. It is the one of these shortcut formula to because calculate. yesterday you was explaining that was that thing and I I totally got confused like uh, how to calculate the truth. Right, four thirty one, right, and divided by the no 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 uh, one divided one uh, one one divided by four eight one. Give me a second one per second now, then per second yeah. so you can see it is giving me like 2.07 so is it the 481 no 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 it is 5 divided by 481 right it will be same Uh, we have okay. okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. The which formula you are applying? Yeah. Mm, five divided by four thirty one. Okay, multiply by which formula you are applying, sir?
you can check it again and then we can discuss again okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, any other query anyone no okay then guys thank you bye bye